everybody, it's Gwen from Proof of Africa. Today, we have the chance to have James with us, uh, who is the co-founder of Gimbal Labs. How are you, James? Not bad. How are you, Gwen? Super. I'm really, really glad to have you today. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit today about the initiatives you are doing amongst the, the Cardano community and perhaps a bit beyond after uh, as well. Um, first of all, just briefly to, to have people to, to help them to know you a bit more. Can you tell us a bit about you, your background and, and all this kind of thing? Sure. Yeah. So I, I've been a high school math teacher for most of my adult life. So, you know, this is why I love talking to you. Uh, we, we can compare notes and you and I have talked in the past about similarities we see between teaching math to kids and kind of teaching blockchain to everybody. Um, so I, I've been a teacher. I, I more recently have worked in supporting teachers. And yeah, so the last few years I've been working for two different uh, private companies supporting teachers. Uh, first, generally supporting teachers to begin to adopt different forms of technology and different teaching styles in their classroom. And more recently, supporting uh, elementary school teachers to learn how to use some really complicated software uh, that, that forces children to really think for themselves. And that's, that's something we can dive into more some other time. I feel like even doing, I could even do a demo of this program called ST Math sometime, and we could like look at it together and talk about how it's similar to talking to grownups about Cardano. Um, but yeah, that's, so I, I was, I was there for the last three years, um, learning about Cardano in the background, uh, and just kept seeing these connections. And so that kind of brought me to here. Okay. That's, that's actually really interesting on seeing that you come from like the teaching world and you've seen that there is an opportunity with, with blockchain about like empowering people because I think at the end of the day, it's the, we always see like the, the math teacher as the, you know, like the bad guy who like the kids are scared of because they don't understand what's happening. But the mm -hmm. thing is like, it's really cool to give the kids the tools. And actually it's basically what you want to continue to do on the blockchain. So not necessarily uh, for kids right now, but more mm -hmm. for adults, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, I can't speak for every country. Right. But I think I think people generally understand that somehow education doesn't work for everybody. Right. The, this, and it's it's a systems thing where where schools, schools that I know in the United States are not built to really maximize opportunities for kids to think for themselves. Um, and and the way this expresses itself in practice is that teachers can try to create those systems, but that creates islands. And, and the way schools work is there's still a critical mass of teachers who really believe in this, in this power and authority relationship they have in kids. And that's their first approach. Listen to me because I say so. And it's possible to abandon that approach but it's i'm speaking from experience it's hard because first of all kids are not used to it if you say hey i'm going to put you in charge of this classroom and i'm going to teach you how to take all the responsibility you need in order to do that but also you then deal with pushback from colleagues who are saying what are you doing letting the kids run run the show over there and you know so this this so I, I've seen it firsthand, uh, just what it feels like to, to be a student in a school that really doesn't have your empowerment as its first goal. Uh, so, you know, again, this is another thing we could connect directly to monetary policies, too. I think they're designed the same way. Um, but yeah, I think if we start trying to, if we try to elucidate all of the connections between teaching and the work we're doing right now, it, we, we, it, I think we have to meet every week to talk about that stuff. Definitely, actually, we can we can think of another format where we can, <laughs> we can talk about this. Mm -hmm. um, 
So actually, like what you just say, also connect with what what you are doing r right now with uh, with more an adult uh, public, but it's also like to help them to empower themselves and and to work by themselves. So, my my next question will be: uh, first of all, before going into the initiative, uh, mm -hmm. why did you choose to be active uh, in the Cardano community? Oh man, I love that question. I mean, so a lot of us have the stories about how we came to blockchain and which ideas really resonated with us. I actually, I had some great conversations about Bitcoin way back in the early days with the, with the anarchist art and chemistry teacher at the school where I was working. And she, she you know, actually, this is a funny story. We used to, we used to do all sorts of project-based learning at this school where I was teaching in New York City. And and one of, one of the projects that this teacher ran every year was uh, an alternative fuels project, right? So she would actually teach the kids how to create ethanol, and then they would burn it right there, right there in the school um, to, you know, to make sure, and they, they would be, you know, they would measure the temperature and they would be able to judge the effectiveness and, and how successful kids were at at distilling ethanol. And every year there was like one or two kids who would look at her and say, you just taught me how to make alcohol, didn't you? You know, and she'd be like, she'd be like, well, actually, uh, officially no, but by the way, yes, let's talk in five years. <laughs> so, so, and so this, this teacher was the first person who ever talked to me about Bitcoin and her husband was mining it back then. And and she really understood deeply the longer term potential, you know, and, and, it, and it, with those with those early days, uh, Bitcoin folks, it was never about money, really, right? People were just, you've heard Charles talk about it. It's, it was so surprising when that stuff actually became valuable. Um, and really just because of time, I never really paid attention to it. You know, it just wasn't, it wasn't important to me based on what I understood about it so far and, and the life I was leading. So it wasn't until I heard about smart contracts when Ethereum was rolling out that I was like, oh, wow, okay, that's a really cool idea. That seems like it's going to yield a whole bunch of applications. Yeah, now there is something, so, yeah. Yeah, now, th now there's something, right? And so, yeah, in the middle of 2017, I just started, like a lot of people, um, I, I think I was one of those people who jumped on like right as that that last bull cycle was starting and just bought some Litecoin, learned about Ethereum, looked for local meetups. And I found a guy who had been working at Consensus who lived in my hometown. And he, he and I became really close and talked about a lot of big ideas. And that, that was a really powerful experience. Um, but by following through with those ideas and and, and doing the research and just reading a lot, I heard about Cardano, saw the whiteboard video, just like a lot of people, you know, not, my story is not that unique, um, but every, every bit I heard about Cardano, I was like, you know, this, this does seem exciting and legit. The bull market happened. I was, I, I had a little bit of ADA and I was like, man, it would be really nice if this, all just like crashed for a little while, just so everybody here can 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 get more involved and slow down. And that's been the best part, honestly, about the last three years is, is that slow pace, is having this chance to learn little by little about what Cardano is doing to, to, to not get caught in any sensations, but to actually read the papers and try to understand them and you know, you and I are both math guys. I'm sure you've read a lot of a lot of their research, and it's it's just right. objectively fascinating. It forget about it. forget it about all the hype. I mean, this stuff is just straight up interesting. And if I was still teaching in the classroom, there's all sorts of projects I would try to do. You know, just to teach kids, just give them a little taste of of how Ouroboros works, right? Just like do a little project, just to say, hey. There, the, here's a problem called trust, and and here's here's a solution called consensus. And how do you do that, right? So yeah, I used to teach a whole lesson or a whole like project about the arguments uh, the founding fathers in the United States used to have 
about voting and apportionment methods. So kind of similar stuff that, that we could really start to bring into secondary uh, curriculum right now. I'm sorry, I'm bouncing. I know I'm bouncing all around with this answer. Oh, good. Uh, but that's but that's kind of. I mean, just that curiosity. I think. Well, and I can only I, I sample size one right here. Uh, Cardano most satisfied my curiosity. I think, and that that was what really got me to stick around and and learn a little bit. I I. You know, we use the word lurker. I lurked for years um, until last summer when the Shelley Summit happened. And just went there for those those couple of virtual days and started meeting people and started some conversations that lasted through the rest of the summer. That's where the Afro Fin Lab podcast came out of. That's how I met Josh in the first place was really the conversations that came out of, of the Shelley Summit and, and huge credit to, to Sydney, who was, was just popping around um, that summit in the chat rooms saying, hey, if you're interested in these questions, we should talk. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. All right, let's follow up. So yeah, he and I just had some wonderful and epic and far reaching conversations over the course of last summer. That's where that podcast came from. And you know, I'm, I'll, I'm just so grateful that we found each other because it, it allowed all of us to engage in a level that we hadn't before. So then Catalyst followed, you know, Catalyst Fund One, I think the call to action for that came came out in, in August. Yeah. And so then had a chance to start getting involved in that, meeting more people. And, and that brings us to, to here. That that that's really interesting. And I, I really like when you say when you said that actually, you know, during the, the last bull run, you know, the price goes up and stuff. And goes down for like almost three years and i think it's actually the good point because and it's i think also why i i kind of like the community there is a lot of people who just came here because they were really interested in the in the tech behind and the fact that it's peer-reviewed so i know that for some people it's like yeah but it takes time it's long yeah but it's how research is done so i i don't i don't say by that that nothing can go faster Perhaps. But the thing is that with this, it's, it's legit. And there is a lot of people who worked on it, reviewed the things, who corrected it. And the thing is like now, because during the, like for the past two years, I didn't hear a lot about the price. There was some people talking about the price, but mm. now it goes up. Of course, like you hear about it about a, a bit more, but the thing is like, like the team has three years to focus on the thing and not just releasing things because you have to right. sustain the people who wants the, the price to go up. And I think it's also why this community is so rich is like, you don't have people who want the price and stuff and I have nothing against that, but we also like a really community who works and wants to build something. And they know that value, not necessarily monetary, but like value gonna come if things are building on the platform. Yes, yes. So it brings me to to the the next question, which is, what are the initiatives you're working on within this ecosystem? Um, so I had a so I like I mentioned a minute ago, I participated in Fund One of Project Catalyst, and that we we were just talking yesterday after town hall. Um, a few people stopped by for the Gimbal Labs meet and greet. And one of the ideas that came up is how it might be interesting if Catalyst could provide a similar experience uh, to what Fund One was, like learning the Catalyst system, building it as we go without having money involved. That was just a priceless experience, right? There were, there were 50 of us who, sh who just showed up. They, they said, you know, they basically accepted the first 50 people who responded to a little survey. Um, which, which meant that the group was self-selecting and diverse and, and, and we had a lot of different kinds of conversations. And just for me, the personal advantage was that it gave me a head start in learning how to think through and organize and iterate on ideas in a way that would, would resonate. Um, so my initial idea that I proposed in Fund One 
just had to do with open source experiential learning, um, just trying to introduce this idea of project-based learning that I knew resonated in the classroom and in the work I had done beyond the classroom. And I really saw these connections that this could be a powerful tool or framework or mindset, however you wanna talk about what PBL is, right? But, but one that would be of value to the Cardano community as we move step-by-step step towards mainstream adoption. Um, that gave me the, the chance to meet Julie, uh, who just provided some amazing feedback on that initial proposal. That led to some great conversations and eventually to collaboration. Um, so I said this in town hall yesterday, but I wanna reiterate it here. I mean, the way that everybody out there can, can really make the most of Catalyst is look for collaborators. This is, there is, uh, there is not a better venue on the planet for, for unlikely collaborators to meet each other than Project Catalyst. And that's only gonna grow. I think that it's really, really important what you just said. Um, Catalyst is way more than just a funding platform. Uh, we, we had a discussion with Dor from, from uh, IOG uh, last week. And it's what he said. And like, for instance, right now it's really technical, let's say the, the blockchain, but if you have an ID and you don't necessarily have the technical skills to do it, but you have an ID, a vision, just go there, submit it. And you're going to find people who agree with your ID and who have the skill. And honestly, this thing, if you just try to do it by yourself, I will not say it's impossible, but it's going to be super complicated. With this, you have this platform, it's free. I mean, it's also important, but like it costs you nothing about the time you're gonna spend to do it. And it's like really, really powerful. And on top of that, you might have the chance to be funded if, if the community agree with your ID. But just the fact that you can propose thing, get feedback and get people in like higher into brackets, like but having people in your team, is like awesome, really. Yeah. We, I mean, and don't get me wrong, I love putting on my headphones and shutting out the world for a couple hours and writing some code. That's, you know, that's solo work. You have to do it, right? Because it's, it's and, and for everybody who just enjoys doing that, of course, that's part of, that's part of this work. Um, but, but yeah, like, I mean, just people working together, it, it always yields better results than one person hacking away at, at a problem and whether that's development or some other kind of solution. Um, yeah, and, and Catalyst is providing that and, and really we're just getting started with that, right? So bringing this, I think, so another way to think about Catalyst, I've talked to a lot of friends and family over the last three years telling them, hey, I'm, I've become interested in this thing called Cardano. Let me let me tell you a little bit about it. And, and there were a lot of lonely days where trying to talk to people about it didn't really resonate. Um, I feel you. <laughs> you know, but more recently, the, the two things that, that have without fail really connected with people more recently. One is talking about staking and, and ownership of the network and comparing that, for example, to the SWIFT network on which Visa runs, right? Where you can say, look, Visa runs on, on four data centers and Cardano runs currently on 1,700 owner-operated stake pools. Some of those stake pools are on AWS and that's fine, right? A lot of them aren't. And we know people, you and I, you know, we've had first one-on-one -on -one conversations with folks who are running data centers themselves because they've seen way out into the future. They know where this is going and they know that autonomy of data is what we're going to need in order to sustain this thing in the long term. Um, but when you, when you say to somebody who only has a passing interest in Bitcoin because they've heard the word and that's all they know, when you say to somebody, let me, let me show you how Cardano compares to Visa let's talk about transaction fees and the fact that actually fees should exist that you know moving data 
should cost money. We've, and that's another side conversation is about how we've been paying for data transmission with our attention and with our privacy, right? Um, understanding transactions should cost something. Where do those transaction costs go? In Visa, they go to a centralized authority. And in Cardano, they go straight back to the community, right? And you can see directly where they come from, right? And so when you start talking about 5% proof of stake, that sounds like a magic, unsustainable miracle. And then you get people to understand where that's actually coming from. And they say, wow, that, that actually totally makes sense. Wait, I can, I can own the network? Yep. <laughs> you know, so that, that has been a really nice point to be able to share. But even more than that, the idea of catalyst is starting to catch on. And with, with some of my closest friends, I started telling them about catalyst months ago. And I, you know, it was hard to explain because it almost sounds too good to be true. What's the, yeah, true. what's the mm -hmm. catch, right? And gradually, first of all, I'm getting better at talking about what it is, <laughs> but also Catalyst is growing. The array of challenges is, is, is just growing, right? More diverse over time. And this, this, this really is something that, that newcomers and people who have never really cared about blockchain at all are going to see what Catalyst is doing, and they're going to become interested in it for independent reasons, right? Completely different reasons than maybe you and I started uh, getting into Cardano years ago. Uh, I'm taught like a buddy of mine is a personal chef in Boston. He's he's cooked for a lot of famous people. He's got all sorts of interesting connections, and and he see like he's like, oh wow, okay, based on what you're telling me, yeah, I I could use this trust layer that you're describing in my business. I could use this record keeping layer in my business. And hell, people like to brag about the food they eat. I could even have, uh, I could even have tickets to my, my private events where people walk away with a cool little NFT so they can show off the food that I made for them, you know? So like those kinds of conversations are starting and Catalyst gives us a place uh, to, to, to bring those and to really push what's possible out to a much, much broader audience. Sorry. So the reason I just said all that is mostly because I'm grateful that I get to have these conversations with just everybody these days, because they, they really do resonate. So yeah, what you just said about the fact that now there is people who start to, um, it's, it's not a, in, in a mean way I say that, but like general people we're not yeah. involved in this who so suddenly said, oh, but I can do something with that. And it's actually what we need. And it's how you see somehow success. For me, success is this. If the thing that you create might be used by others. And when Cardano is just going to become a toolbox, I think it's the, the point. Like, and then people use it to build something else. And it's okay. what's, what's really important. So, I mean, can I just jump in there for a sec? I, this course. is their... Not only is there nothing wrong with not knowing ab about blockchain yet, also there's a lot of really good reasons to not want to spend your life reading about crypto and stuck to a computer screen, right? I mean, the people with the best ideas, the ones who are going to come in and, and really bring Cardano to the masses are the ones that haven't spent the last three years with laser eyes, right? Who haven't spent the last few years reading all the papers. They've been out there living their lives and, and doing things and experiencing problems in their community, right? And you and I were talking right before we, we, we pressed record about this sense of optimism we feel inside the Cardano community that is absent from some other people's experience in the world right now. Those people are the ones who understand the real problems we're gonna solve. Right. And we're going to we're going to get these ideas out to folks. And, and because they haven't been glued to screens, they're going to be able to say, ah, I understand. I understand that now. And I could see how it's going to solve this problem. And, and as you say, like, I, I don't know if it's the word in English, but having some fresh blood coming into the system is going to bring new ID. Because actually, as you say, like now people who are really focused on it to understand perfectly how it works. 
they, they don't really necessarily think out of the box and seem like, yeah. and we need yeah. people who just arrive and say, yeah. I want to do that. How can I do that with blockchain? And then it's yeah. going to also we, help we've us. Used, to... We've used our brains to understand as much as we can about blockchain and Cardano. And that just means necessarily that we haven't been thinking about other things. It's not a, it's not a value judgment. It's just the truth, right? Exactly. Um, so just to, to come back on what you, you are doing, uh, can you tell us a bit about uh, Gimba Labs specifically, just for people yes. understanding a bit more what, what you're doing? I took a wild detour when I no, started talking okay. about Catalyst because I'm so excited about it. Um, right. So Gimba Labs is one of the successfully funded proposals in Fund 2 of Project Catalyst. Um, my co-founders, thank you. Um, I, I'm... I'm obviously thrilled that we were funded, proud that we accomplished that, um, and the most proud that we were the only proposal to combine two different projects, right? Um, for, like I said earlier, for me, that's the real magic of what Catalyst can do. Uh, so Roberto Morano, uh, Gimbal Labs co-founder, Julie, who I told you about, who I met um, in the comments, and me, we, we finished this proposal. Roberto had initially proposed to have open source uh, APIs as a community service. Basically, he took all of the APIs that IOHK has, has created, uh, but that come with the overhead of needing to set up your own node or your own instance of DB Sync, which even if you are technically proficient, setting up DB Sync takes time. Sometimes, I mean, it, it can take more than a day for it to sync. And if you want to build something quickly, obviously that slows you down, right? So, so his APIs, uh, the Dandelion APIs, um, make, it, make it easier and quick for people to spin up proofs of concept about, about what blockchain can do. I've been playing with them because I don't have my own instance of DB sync running right now. So I'm, I'm just grateful on a personal level for those. Uh, but we're also starting to see a lot of people show up and use those. We combined his proposal with mine about project-based and experiential learning. I, I, star I started to develop this idea of Cardano starter kits, which, you know, I've published a few of them, but really haven't even delivered on the vision for those yet. I, I want them to be things that inspire people to, to take action, to get their hands dirty and do things. And just like when I was a first and second year teacher, I still spend a lot of time talking a lot. <laughs> and so, so I think, I think getting, achieving the goal of project-based learning is a journey for all educators. And, and you kind of have to learn the content well enough to get to the point where you know what you can ask people to do. Um, so I'm, I'm in the middle of that journey right now with starter kits. Um, and so Gimbal Labs, is, is an education platform, a collection of technical resources, and a growing community of people coming together to build out more outward facing content, whether it's starter kits, we have a whole team working on short video content right now. Um, I could talk more about that in a minute. Uh, and then we have a more technical side, people building upon the Dandelion APIs uh, we just welcomed the, the fourth member of our growing leadership team. His name is Kyle. He, uh, he runs Lyft Stake Pool and built out Lyft Wallet. Um, I actually, I'd like to talk more about that in a minute too. And he runs, he's also, while he works on Lyft Wallet, uh, creating weekly videos of basically live hacking sessions called Coding on Chain. So if you're a more technical person, wondering how to build on Cardano, I would heartily recommend checking out Coding on Chain. It's live on Twitch every week, but it's also, there's an archive on, on YouTube that you can check out. So, and you can so, see, you can see so, a lot that you can do without Plutus. Just, just for people, so like then I think I'm gonna see with you so you can send me all the links. Yeah. And I can put it in the description so like everybody can directly have a look because it's actually sometimes a bit above my level. <laughs> But it's really yeah. interesting because it's for people who really understand the thing and who wants to get their, their hands dirty in the code and stuff. It's really interesting. Yeah. And this, I, you know, just to say a word more about this, right? A lot of people are waiting 
for Plutus to come out, for, for Gogin to be fully released, right? Um, with, with, ju with just as much enthusiasm as I encourage people to learn how to collaborate on Catalyst, I encourage people not to wait. Learn as much as you can about what you can do right now with what's been released. Kyle, Kyle's journey started off because he looked at he looked at Cardano and said, I wonder how to build a wallet. I just I, he just had his own personal curiosity, like, can I build, can I build my own wallet from scratch? And so he just spent a couple weekends doing that. And he needed, he needed some technical support which led him to the dandelion endpoints. And so he and Roberto started talking about those and one thing led to another. And now Lyft is a project that has five or six different devs contributing to it. And we have this idea about creating a whole suite of Lyft wallets, each that does some different specialized task, right? Uh, Cause that's gonna be an essential step in, in moving towards a world where people don't even know they're using blockchain. Right. Is, so this I, and, and I love listening to Kyle talk about how misleading the word wallet is in the first place. We need we need a different word. <laughs> um, but yeah, just just there's so much building you can do right now. And if you're waiting for Plutus, one of the best things you can do is is learn everything possible about metadata and tokens so you can understand the limits of what those two tools can do so that when you get your hands on Plutus, you'll understand exactly where it fits in that stack, right? I, I think it's an important point uh, you, you just made about the fact that people should actually start to learn and understand prior to having, having Plutus because at the end of the day, Plutus is just a language, but you need to understand how it works and how the blockchains and all, all these components are working together. So it's also important to start prior to it to be really ready and have a full understanding of the thing prior to actually code with Plutus. Yeah. Yeah. When you build a DAP, you're going to be using metadata and tokens, right? You're also going to be using Plutus, uh, but two out of those three things are already available to you. Um, so like, if I will understand the idea with, with the prior idea with Gimbal Lab was to create those content to help people to understand how it works. Uh, and then, so like that, that's the, the basing thing and you are uh, already doing some stuff with ABCD, but we're going to come back to that uh, in another question. So like people can see actually what you are doing during those session and what you, because you are the, the one in front of the, the, the trainees and stuff. So it, it's interesting. My, my idea also regarding what you just say is um, now that you do, you, you launch Gimba Labs, you've been founded. Uh, what is the, the vision on the, on the long term for Gimba Labs? Yeah. What, what, what do you want to achieve in, in global? Yeah. So in the immediate term, we want to bring people together, give them a place where they can learn and build together. Right. We, and we really thought that we would be just kind of a small group of people building alone for a while. We, 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 we <laughs> but what suddenly happened is people started showing up. We, people like people like Kyle saying, "Hey, what you're doing really resonates, right?" People would find a, a video on YouTube or or a tweet, or they they would find Dandelion and they would say, "Hey, actually, I think I think I think you guys align with with what the way I've been thinking." And so people have really started to show up. So over the last few weeks, we've started to create a few different kinds of projects where we're experimenting with collaboration and we're trying to cultivate leaders, right? We really, I had a great conversation um, with Soph yesterday who had a proposal in fund four that was similar enough to, to my original proposal. And he saw for himself, he was like, oh, what you guys are doing at Gimbal Labs that actually, that's what I was trying to achieve. And, and we were having, we were just talking and he said something that I wrote in my original proposal, which was, listen, I don't, I don't need to be in charge of this. I just want this to exist, right? So this, this whole idea um, of, of cultivating a, you know, a variety of leaders and a, and a, and a leadership team that somehow can, 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 help 
this hive to really, I'm not trying to rhyme here, but we want the hive to thrive, right? <laughs> um, and, and that involves having a variety of talented leaders and because there's just so much to do. So in the long term, what we, what we really believe is that if we keep creating open source lessons and tools and we develop expertise internally and we develop broad and varied leaders who, can, who are ready to lead any sort of project, we're suddenly going to have, once, you know, once the wider world understands Cardano and its, its possibilities, we're going to have a team that's ready to help deliver on whatever people need. And, and so the business plan is very similar to, to a long history of open source projects that make software for free, and then they can, they can charge clients for help using that software, right? So that's, that's the long-term plan. And we want to be able to spin up flexible teams from our, from our hive of builders and doers and communicators and educators. And you know some projects will only require two or three people, Others will require a whole production team, right? Um, and the best metaphor for what I, you know, for what we're the way we're thinking about this is movie production companies, right? When 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 people come together to make a film, it's a full time job with, with you know with at least a forty hour a week time commitment, and and it has all the trappings of. Of, of real deep extended corporate work, but then the movie is finished and the team just disbands, right? Maybe you, maybe you worked intensely together for four or six or 18 months, right? Uh, but at the end of it, that project's over. And so we, we, we really see Gimbal Labs as being able to spin up teams to deliver on, on, a, on a wide array of projects and the only way to, to get to that point is to do what we're doing right now, which is just to practice collaboration structures, building up teams, building up leaders, making stuff. It's, it's, and I think it's the perfect timing to do that because once again, as you say, not everybody, not everybody, not everything is ready on Cardano. But like if you try all these models before, as soon as it's going to be ready, at least you're going to have try different scenario and you can see what works the, the best and stuff. And I think it's, it's really interesting. And once again, I think because we, we talked to each other several times, we are, we are totally in line, aligned on the fact that one individual cannot do much by himself. There is like brilliant people and stuff. Okay. But the thing is like, if we go together, if we learn how to work together, that's how it works. Right. And as you say, now and and I, I really really like what you're doing. I, I'm often on the on your Discord because I think that a lot of discussions are sometimes a bit a, a lot for me. It's difficult <laughs> to follow up, but it's cool because it means that people are like exchanges ideas and it's like oh yeah, I would like to. I've seen. I think it was a, a bit earlier today. Somebody just say, oh, I have an ID. I, I'm not. Uh, I don't have necessarily the technical skill, but he came at the right place. If I'm right, right. And that, that conversation was awesome because that was somebody who clearly understands some technical challenges of Cardano and also understands that they don't quite have the skills to build the thing, right? But yeah, I, I was reading that, that post and was just amazed. I was like, yo, you get it. You, you understand what the tech can do, which is almost as value as be as as valuable as being able to build the solution itself right and this is this goes back to catalyst right every catalyst round starts with a week where you're not proposing yet you're just sensing problems and proposing ways to interpret the problem statement itself that's a really valuable skill we we you know we're going to need people out in the world doing that part too so i think it's i think now like uh it's 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 clear on like where you come from and, and what's going to become uh, Gimbal Labs. And I really invite people to, to, to have a look on the Discord and stuff. Because as you say, I think you didn't launch it like a long time ago. And there is already, it's like uh, bubbling, you know, like there is a lot of ideas and yeah, a lot of things already. Word. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's really cool. 
Um, uh, I would also like to to just because um, time flies, <laughs> uh, I, I would like uh, you to present us a little bit what you are uh, what you are doing with with ABCD, so it can help people to have an idea of actually how those um, training sessions uh, look like, and, and just yeah, if you can not necessarily really. In, in detail but just what sure. the idea and what you can do with the with those developers yeah so so cardano starter kits are asynchronous learning right they're they're resources that people can just show up and look at on their own time anytime synchronous of course is like we're doing right now being in the same place at the same time and, and talking in real time and so we're, we're piloting synchronous learning opportunities uh, and I'm actually piloting two dev courses right now. One is with the ABCD team and another is with some, some local folks. I live on the East Coast of the United States. There's a stake pool called Adopt where I just, I, you know, those guys, a bunch of young guys who have a lot of actually a lot of technical talent, um, but, but I've never done much development work before. So we're diving in and figuring out what we can do. With, with POA and with ABCD, we are, we're piloting a developer course. The long-term goal for ABCD is to have a training center where developers can come and become you know, production-ready blockchain devs. Uh, and not being quite one of those myself, I can't get people all the way there, but we have to start somewhere. So I figured, hey, let's just, let's just start. And it's, it's, it's a handful of young women so far. It's uh, Faye, Buki, you've, you've hopped in a, a couple of times. Um, Juan, one of, one of our friends at Gimbal Labs comes by because he's learning some development too. So real open door policy. Um, and we've made some progress. We've, you know, we've, we've gone a little bit into how to begin to integrate dynamic data into a web-based app. So you can understand that idea. We dove a little bit into using metadata as that source of dynamic data last week. And this week we launched building out a front end for ABCD to connect with the world. Um, it's a small team so far. Like I said, it's Faye Buki, right? There's, there's two developers learning right now. Um, but I, I really believe in, in small beginnings and, and trying things. Now, here's the other thing that happens their internet connection is not reliable, right? I've done a lot of lecture-based teaching just because, you know, they, they don't have enough bandwidth to turn on their video and, and, and speak back and, and ask questions. What I really hope in the short term is that by showing, by kind of showing the limits of what we can do right now, given the technology, is that we can push the conversation about improving connectivity in Port Harcourt, for example, uh, so that we can actually deliver on these things. And this, this goes back to a conversation, I told you about these conversations last summer. We realized even then that all of these big ideas we're having comes down to the infrastructure that you have on which to build them, right? So Cardano is great, sure, but we, we got some other problems to solve. And so, you know, as, as far as the developers have come over the last few weeks that we've been piloting this course, what I really hope is that maybe some people uh, who have the capacity to, to, to help improve the infrastructure down there, we watch those videos. Look how it's just me talking. That's not what it should be. <laughs> we, need, we need these to be rich and interactive experiences. We need those developers to be trained to be the actual leaders, right? If, if, if we're successful here a year or two from now, Faye, Buki, they're going to be teaching these courses, right? Um, and that's, that's at, at the root of all of this is wherever somebody is at, we want to push them to the next level, right? You're a beginner dev, cool. Let's see if we can get you to the point of being a contributing dev on a project, right? You're a contributing dev with some talents. Let's see if we can make you a leader who can be a project lead or who can teach other people, right? You have some rich skills in some other medium. Let's see if we can get you to, to lead an initiative. This is what we're doing at 
Gimbal Labs initiatives right now. These are these are messy little projects. I, I purposefully threw a, a a challenge brief that was brief up into the Gimbal Labs community just to see if if we could get projects going. And one of them worked out. We now have we now have two people who hadn't really been contributing to Gimbal Labs before, Matthew and Farouk, leading a project about building a shared library of content and figuring out innovative schemes for paying contributors for that content. And these guys, these guys might be running Gimbal Labs a year from now, right? Which, which, would, be, which would be the highest level of success to go from you're showing up to we're getting to know each other to you're leading. All right, so the reason I'm taking that detour is to bring that back to the POA and the ABCD course. This is what we want to do, right? We want to start with whatever seed of an idea, work hard every week, you know, like we, they show up for class, I show up for class, we do as much as we can in the time we have. Um, but where is it going? It's, it's going towards capable contributors, capable leaders, uh, so that, so that we can realize this uh, this distributed decentralized ideal that we we've been talking about for uh for a couple of years now that's I, actually like I, I know a bit like what you're doing but it's really I, I really like the, the the way you're thinking because um not everything is perfect uh but we're gonna go through we're gonna find ideas we're gonna find solutions and i also really like the the fact that you say it's not a question of uh only the top developers in the world can enter. No, 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 no. We are Gimba. We Gimba Lab going to be we soon, soon. We <laughs> G- come on, man. <laughs> Gimba Lab is going to going to be able to give everybody a chance to go a step further, and then another one. Instead of saying like you are here and we're going to bring you to the top, or like in two months, or I don't know. It's like no, no, no. Like and you and I think that it's going to be the idea as well. It's like people can also build up their own curriculum depending on the time they have depending on the goal they have and stuff and i think it's really really cool to have this opportunity to learn for your goal because often when you build a curriculum it's like you need to make it how to say it, like sustainable or good for a lot of people but it doesn't yeah. necessarily fit your need yeah. and i think that if i will understand with your your uh, content people are going to be able to build their own uh, That's right. Oh yeah. If if six months from now, if I'm the only person making starter kits, I failed. Right. That's 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 the whole point. And bringing this back to the classroom, this idea of perfection that you just said. Right. Um, actually, if you as a teacher deliver your knowledge too perfectly, right, to oversimplify, this intimidates kids, and kids actually disengage because they look at you and they're like. I could never do that, right? The, the, the way to engage is to, is to be specifically imperfect, right? And I'm not, I, I'm imperfect, not for strategic reasons, just because I, there's a lot of shit I don't know, you know? So I, I, it, it's easy for me to be imperfect, but really it's, it's, you have to think about it strategically too. The more people see what it's like to just be trying and to be saying, look, I don't know what I'm doing either. That's what's going to bring people in. That's what's going to make people feel like they can access this. So many people never engage because they say, oh, I'm not smart enough. That's not for me. And that couldn't be farther from the truth that you should have seen these playground meetings that we're starting to have in Gimbal Labs. We all have no idea what we're doing. And that's the point, right? And if, if you show up with people who are willing to work hard and not know what they're doing together, you're going to go places. That, that that's really important uh, it's also when when we had this discussion with door last week because you say it's also a problem for him because being in iog people like expect from him that knowing exactly and stuff and he said like we're mm. doing things that haven't been done before so of course mm-hmm. like we make mistakes yeah but it also i think it's also what as you say attract people because everybody can say oh i can contribute to it right. you know it's not like a discussions between nobel prizes where no, I don't belong. No, 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 I can. And, and, and as you say, I, as teacher, it's really important to, it's always been easy for me not to be perfect. Uh, <laughs> that's really easy for me. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's really interesting because you don't want to be this guy up there, you know, like everybody's right. looking at you and no, 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 you want to 
actually empower people and say, you can do it. Try, try, which is the most important. Just try. Look at what a fool I just made of myself. You could do the same thing, right? I bet you could do it better than me. Come on, come do it better. Uh, Show me. Okay. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah, see? <laughs> You're good. Um, uh, I think that we covered a lot of things already. Um, I definitely going to have other discussion with you because I think that and it's fun we, talking to you. We, we, we really need to, yeah, there is a lot of things that we can address and spend a bit more time detailing the thing. I think that for today was good to have an overview um, really of what you're doing, a little example with ABCD and also what you want to do in the future. Um, perhaps before, uh, before finishing this session, um, like let's have a little conclusion. I don't know if you have like a, one thing you would like to to explain about Gimbal Lab or what the thing that you're going to do just in order to sum up a bit the, the whole yeah. thing for the people who are not oh, patient man. enough to go to the, to the end. Oh, let's let's just go back to the key point about Catalyst, I guess, right? Go go talk to people. Go go be imperfect. Go post ideas. We 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 are witnessing the the initial release of a system that is now running every six weeks six weeks of your life is is nothing right you talked about Gwendol you talked about missing out on a year right the pandemic a lot of people didn't take advantage of the chance to buckle down and learn stuff to read books right during this pandemic um this you know if a year can pass six weeks is nothing and when you come into project catalyst what you have a chance to do is throw an idea out there and it doesn't have to be perfect. And in fact, if it's not perfect, you're gonna start some conversations. You're gonna meet some people and maybe you're not gonna end up being the only name on a proposal, right? So there, there's an element of humility here, I guess, to be willing to come together and, and be on a team. But this is, this is exactly what this brand new structure is creating. And, you know, and we're already, see, we're seeing it in fund three. We're already seeing it happen in fund four. Uh, proposals that weren't quite ready to be successful yet have developed further. And now they are. There are some guaranteed winners in fund three who didn't quite make the cut in fund two. I mean, I talked to Josh about this directly. Josh said, yeah, if, if ABCD was funded, that, might, that probably wouldn't have given us the chance to really reflect on what our first goals are, right? Now they've had that chance to reflect. There's a bigger pool of money. There's a better proposal. So you asked me about, about summing up Gimbal Labs, but I can't, I can't do that without first trying to really push people into Catalyst and say, yo, go, go put yourself out there start something, right? Start another Gimbal Labs, start a, start a competitor to Gimbal Labs, right? Because we need, we need group, we need manageably sized groups of people going out there, building specialized communities that they can do things together. And if you need help building anything, your proposal or a competitor, We'll help. I, I would love to help somebody launch a competitor to Gimbal Labs so that we can then compare notes with each other, but then work independently. Like that's, that's the era that we are entering. And so if we can help you, but you know, you show up for Catalyst, you realize you need some kind of support, um, please come check in. I, I can virtually promise at this point that you're going to find somebody in Gimbal Labs who can help you uh, move your ideas forward. And, and I guess for now, that's, that's our main priority. Long-term, I describe some of those goals, but, but let's live in the moment. Let's do as much as we can right now, because we all know where this is going. This is, this is a historic launch that we're going to have a lot of good stories to tell about someday. Um, so you can, you can rest assured that, that every little drop in the bucket right now is going to yield something uh, later on. I think it, you're good because it concluded perfectly what, what you're seeing and what's and it's what you're building to Gimbal Lab. So like, let's work together, as you say, and it's it's not even a question of of competition or stuff. Like, let's build stuff. That's it. 
And if you yeah. have ID, if you have things, if you, and, um, and for me, uh, sometimes it's just like uh, looking at what others are doing and just like, oh, that's a good idea. Perhaps we can do something like this somewhere else or, or contribute to it. And it's like really the way that people should see, like, let's work together and we're going to build something really, really good for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, James. It was, uh, it was a pleasure. Um, I already well. have like 10 ideas of different I, topics we could talk how together. Often should, we, should we do this every six or eight weeks or something? Yeah, yeah like let's, let's use the, the catalyst pace, you know, every six there weeks. We <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I wish you a pleasant day. Uh, I think that it's the beginning of the day for you. So it is. it's yeah. going to be a, a cool day for you. Uh, and yeah, let's talk to each other really soon. Thanks, Bye, James. Talk to you soon.